amaze your friends. Be the life of your next office party. How did it get on there? And how do you get it off? In this video, I will show you how to use your entry level lathe shaped object to create the elusive captive nut. The captive nut. Actually a very simple project. You can make this on pretty much any lathe. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one, even if you have a lathe that's incapable of cutting threads or if you're incapable of cutting threads, but you have a tap and die set kicking around. Doesn't even have to be a good one. Wait till you see how much my tools suck. Let's get started. We're gonna have to cut a couple of pieces of stock. I'm gonna be using three quarter inch aluminum hex bar for this, mainly because what I had lying around and it's real easy to work with. So what you wanna do is you wanna mark out your sections. Now we're gonna go two inches per piece but you're gonna wanna add an extra two to three thou, go three thou for cleanup. The next step is to clean your material off and get ready to bore a hole through it. The fact that I have no idea what I'm doing should be comforting to you because if I can do it, you can do it. My lathe is a little bit out of whack, so I'm gonna carve myself a little dimple, and that'll kind of help me orient my drill bit when I go to bore the hole in this thing now. I'm gonna go with a quarter 20, because I have a piece of quarter 20 threaded rod kicking around. We go ahead and check our union provided tap chart here. Quarter 20, 13 fourths. Pay no attention to the depth at which I'm drilling, for neither am I. The one you need is always the dirtiest one. There will probably be a little bit of wobble in the thread anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. See what happens. And when it all really comes down to it, aren't they teaching the kids in school? It doesn't matter whether or not you win or lose as long as you have fun. Now from this angle, it almost looks like the hole's off center because the hole's off center. But the way that we're doing this doesn't really demand too much perfection right off the bat. I'm gonna over torque the crap out of this one because I want this one to stay put. All right, she's not going anywhere. Right about there. A clean thread is a happy thread. Let's see how this works. It's not too bad. If someone didn't know any better. They might think I knew what I was doing. If you don't like interrupted cuts, then I don't like you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and do this unsupported. You should probably not do this unless you want to eat a part. <laughs> to get that last little bit, I'm gonna have to do a right hand cut. And uh, my right hand tool, I don't wanna put it, it's dull and I don't wanna replace the insert. I'm lazy. I just rotated the head. I'm using the back side of my left hand cutter. Now normally what you would do is you'd set your lathe up to cut a thread now. I got change gears for this lathe shaped object of mine. Plastic junk. I don't even want to mess with them. I don't want to take the gears that are in there out. I'm not going to try and cut threads with this lathe. On a better lathe, we would probably set up to cut some threads on this bad boy. Probably have our live center on the other end, give it some support. But we're gonna try something different over here and hopefully it works. We don't wanna set up our lathe to cut threads or we can't set up our lathe to cut threads. I'm just using my crappy 
Mastercraft tap and die set. Get it on sale, Black Friday, 35 bucks, whatever it is. When I'm trying to get something perfectly straight on my lathe, I'll put the die in the die holder upside down, like so. That way I can use my tailstock to try and get this somewhat concentric. Once your threads have started, we'll probably throw this on a vise, flip it over and tap it the old fashioned way, that way I can get all the way to the bottom. And Now at this point, we're already somewhat straight because I got the straight threads going on the lathe. I just, it's a lot easier to get some leverage on it when you're in the vise. don't want to take your threads all the way to the bottom. Stop a little bit short because believe it or not that actually helps with the illusion. Now we'll take our die and carefully thread it back onto this guy backwards. By now you should see where I'm going with this. Very careful. Without a chamfer, it's very difficult to get one of these things on backwards, I tell you. Oh, I got it! Woohoo! Alright. So you have to do this without a chamfer to make it work out seamless, right? Now that that guy's back on, let's go ahead and screw this. This could be like an IKEA video. Screw that guy back on now. And this part is very important. You want to try and get the torque to whatever you would want it to be. I'm going to torque it on just about as hard as I can by hand. Because likely this will be the kind of doodad that you'll show somebody by hand. So I'll give it a good, the good old crank. We're just going to run the die right down. See if we can get the threads to somewhat line up. This is gonna be cool. I never tried this before. Oh no! Not to plan Bravo. This is why using hex actually makes the bit easier. I'm not gonna actually torque it on. I'm just gonna hold this thing still while I tap it so it doesn't back off and screw up the alignment of the threads. So I got my left hand here holding this, and my right hand will operate the tie. I'm just gonna kinda sneak up on it. This part here is where the magic happens. And I think we're in. I mean, granted that it's a pretty crappy camera, I think we pretty much hit the seam as best as we can at this point. You'd be pressed to find it if you were standing right here with me. Oh, hey. All right, just focus now. And there's the seam. We go ahead and screw this guy off. And put our half inch by 13 TPI nut on. Put that guy on there. Oh, where's the seam? I don't see it. Boom, magic. Now, a little bit of cleanup, and she's ready to rock. You played your cards right to make everything clean. You can chuck up a nut, throw a couple of washers. It makes the cleanup process a whole lot easier. That's it, you're finished. Proud owner of a captive nut. And now you know the secret. That seam should be next to impossible to find by eye. But by hand, there it is. Impress your friends, impress your neighbors, impress your coworkers. This is a good entry level project. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you try this and it works out for you, let me know. Until next time, 
Later.